Money. Go yeah. back to the compliance issue. Sure. And, I, and the reason I'm asking is, I think, look, a lot of people have looked to you over the years as somebody who uh, is an investor and a successful investor, and they, they follow you. That's, that's the point of why they yes. ask, right? And so they're looking at this and saying, what kind of compliance did this guy do? And just asking around and seeing who else was investing is not compliance unto itself. Well, we did compliance, and the way we did it, we said, let's look at the platform and let's see if it can link to our actual reporting systems. Is it robust enough to allow us to be compliant? Because I also issue securities through other investments. But like did Ocean you ask questions else. about, for example, but, I mean, look, the board piece of it, the CFO piece of it, all of those would be considered compliance oh, red flags. But Andrew, if you're asking, did I do enough due diligence, the answer is no. Did I rely like others did in Joe's concept of groupthink? Yes, we all did that. But did you ask, though, about the relationship between Alameda and FTX? At that time, at that time, Alameda was just another account in FTX, okay? By the way, not just another account. At some point, it might have represented close to 50% of the business that was even on FTX. And there is where I call you out and say, how do you know that if you have no records? And my whole point about this is all of these allegations, all these claims, all of this Sam Bankman-Fried took money out, took it in, whatever, nobody knows because there's no data. That data, as I learned, right. according to Sam, is sitting on a server backed up on AWS. Right now, all roads lead to John Ray, it seems. Mm -hmm. Sam says he can flip the switch. I need that data. I can't go get the money unless I have the data where it went. Here's what I don't understand. I, I mean, you're right. Everybody who we thought were savvy investors can look at this and say, we should have seen the signs. We should have known. I listened to the interview that Andrew did with him so in the deal I. book, and I thought, that guy's a crook and a liar. You listened to it and said you'd invest money with them again if it turns out there's nothing criminally wrong here. What so did you hear that, that I didn't hear? The context hear? of that is I have been known for decades to invest in entrepreneurs that have had catastrophic outcomes, bad ones, because they learn a lot from their mistakes. It may not fit for Sam Bankman-Fried because we don't know the outcome, what's going to occur Yeah, but I, all I can say is everything he said, oh, I just didn't realize. You didn't realize there was an $8 billion hole. You didn't realize that there was, like, Becky, clients' funds this that is, were being this swapped is all over great. there. It's not his fault. Like that, can... that, to me, is like, man, that guy has bad news. That's not just you had bad luck. He was lying and manipulating. You don't know because you have I, no data. I, all I'm saying is, let's do the forensic audit. Let's do the forensic audit. Let's find out what happened. I owe everybody that follows me, as you said, Andrew, I owe them that information. I feel compelled to go get it. I am going to go get it. I'm lucky. I have resources to do it. Let me ask you this. The FTT token, which was one of the sort of underlying I owned component it. parts, I owned the, it. the sort of collateral that was used in part for this entire... It, it is not unusual for an exchange to have a token. Look at Binance. They have one, too. So my question to you, though, is you say you own it, which is now obviously close I, to worthless. I don't know where it is, but I own it. It was and scraped did out you, of my account. did you buy it? Did you have to buy it? Because one of the things that people have raised is this idea that there was a period of time, especially as things got more dicey for the firm yeah. over, over the summer, that he was pushing people to either buy it and hold it. Uh, some people look at the uh, acquisition of BlockFi as a way to effectively defensively protect against that valuation of FTT going down because of uh, their stake in it? I mean, do you think there was manipulation in that regard? I don't think so. I asked, because I have a rule in our shop that I don't want more than 5% in any one position. So I said, I, I'm going to buy a series of tokens and positions. And I own 32 of them, about that. 30, 32, I can't remember exactly. But we had a lot of diversity. Some of them were FTT, some were locked up. There was Serum, Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, and USDC. I just want to make a point, though. You know, this doesn't change the potential for what crypto can be at all. This is no different than Enron or maybe Lehman or Bear Stearns or whatever you want. You don't know the outcome yet. You have to pursue it. You have to do the forensic audit. Enron goes to zero. And I think Toomey said this himself. It didn't change energy trading. Who cares? If Sam Bankman Freed did anything wrong, we're going to find out through the forensic audit. What do you audit. think? You know, I don't know. And I'm going, to, I'm going to follow the path and be part of the process. I also should disclose to you that I applied for the credit committee just before midnight last night. There will only be seven members on it. Um, there's thousands of people that want to be on that credit committee. But I think I have a unique view uh, from the inside out. And I think I can be helpful there as a fiduciary. Um, I am going to drive the process if I can.